Perhaps no stories of tragedy are more heart-wrenching than those that involve a missing child. The disappearance of Pauline Picard is such a tale, but with a twist, because Pauline would be returned to her overjoyed parents when discovered in a distant town. Tragically, within months of her return, her parents would lose her again in an inexplicable twist that cannot be explained to this day. Pauline Picard was two years old on April of 1922. She lived with her family on their farm in rural Brittany, France, near the town of Chateauville. Pauline would go missing that month, and a search was immediately launched to find the missing toddler. Police and volunteers canvassed the Picard farm and the local area. Word that the young girl was missing spread across the region. Unfortunately, after conducting a thorough search, they were unable to find any clues about her disappearance. Some locals speculated that Pauline had been taken by gypsies and was no longer even in the area. The Picards were forced to face the horrifying reality that they may never know what happened to their missing daughter. Despite this, the shattered parents would not give up hope that they would be reunited with Pauline one day. The days turned into weeks with Pauline missing, when out of the blue they received word that a young girl matching Pauline's appearance had been found wandering in Cherbourg, a town over 200 miles away from their family farm. A police officer showed the Picards a picture of the stranded girl, and the mother immediately identified the girl in the photo as little Pauline. The excited parents immediately got on a train for Cherbourg to reunite with their missing girl. When they arrived at the home she was being kept, they were relieved upon seeing the child that it was indeed their Pauline. Strangely, the little girl would not talk with her parents, but the police and parents chalked her silence up to the traumatic experience she had likely been through. The relieved parents returned with Pauline to their farm. Although questions remained on who had taken Pauline and why she was found wandering in Cherbourg, the parents, siblings, and neighbors were all overjoyed that the girl was returned. Although she was acting differently and refused to talk, everyone was certain she would return to her old self in time. The amazing story of the reunion captured the attention of newspapers across the globe, from Paris to New York. The Picards would go on to report to a journalist that Pauline was seeming to remember the farm and overcoming the trauma she had been through. Everything seemed to be slowly returning to normal for the Picards. Not long later, the Picards had a very peculiar conversation with a neighboring farmer named Yves Martin. The man asked the Picards directly if they were sure the girl was their daughter. After questioning them repeatedly about this, the man ran off exclaiming, God help me, I am guilty. The startled parents would discover that the local farmer was mentally ill and was soon after committed to a mental asylum. Meanwhile, the concerned parents were in a bit of denial about Pauline's ability to overcome her trauma. She had not been adjusting as well as they had declared to reporters, and doubt began to creep into their minds about the girl's identity. Then, in May of that year, a horrific discovery was made on the Picard's family farm. A neighboring farmer was cutting across the Picard's field one day when he found a gruesome sight. A pile of neatly folded clothes belonging to a toddler were lying in the field. Next to them lay the remains of a little girl. The girl's head, feet, and hands were missing, and the body was badly decomposed. Police investigated the scene, and they also found an adult male's skull near the body. The perplexed investigators had the remains of two people on their hands, but there were no local people that were missing except for the previously lost Pauline. On top of that, the search party had canvassed the entire area, including the location where these bodies were found earlier, and there had been no evidence there at the time. Pauline's mother was asked to look at the bundle of folded clothes that were discovered at the crime scene. To her horror, she stated the folded clothes at the scene were the exact clothes Pauline had been wearing the day she went missing. The police were unable to identify who the child was because of the missing body parts, although Mrs. Bricard was certain the clothes belonged to Pauline. Further, the age of the victim also correlated to that of Pauline's. The Bricards may have been convinced the body found in the field belonged to their daughter, despite police uncertainty because in June they would send the toddler that they had found in Cherbourg to an orphanage. The girl would live the rest of her life in an anonymity. The insane farmer would spend the rest of his days in the asylum. There'd be no evidence discovered linking him to the bodies found in the Picard's field. For the Picards, there would not be any answers either. They would never discover what had happened to their daughter or who was behind her disappearance. To this day, there is only questions. If the girl the Picards brought home with them was not Pauline, why was no child reported missing in Cherbourg? Further, how could the parents, siblings, police, and neighbors all confuse the child for Pauline? What had the madman who had questioned the Picards meant when he said he was guilty? 
Who put the bodies in the Picard field and who were the victims? One theory is that the Picards had come across an abandoned child in Cherbourg that just happened to look like their daughter. Others believe that the insane farmer actually killed the young girl and was even further disturbed when he saw her alive and well with the Picards after they found her in Cherbourg. Some locals believe that the body found in the field wasn't actually Pauline's at all. There are many questions, and unfortunately it seems there will be no answers in the sad story of Pauline Picard.